So you've built a fancy website that'll give any business a run for their money. What's the next step? That's gonna be writing your sales copy. And it's a really underrated part of designing a website and launching a business because it seems like such a small component. It's just the writing on the pages after all. Not at all. The writing is actually gonna impact the conversion rates, the user experience, the branding, and everything in between. So it's super critical that you write really effective web copy on all of these pages. But how do you approach it and what should you write? In today's video, if you stick around, I'll be teaching you some of my best website copywriting practices that I use for my own website and clients to really boost their conversion rates. Number one is using a content hierarchy on your pages. Now, the best content on the internet, the best copy, the best web pages are all going to have a very similar flow, structure, and format. This is because it allows the copy really to shine and the messaging to come through and help with conversions and performance, but also it helps with the visual appeal and how people engage with it. If you go to a lot of really good websites, normally they're gonna have a similar format, beginning with the above the fold section. Here you're gonna have a nice headline with a subheader, probably a call to action button, and on the right side, you're gonna have some kind of image or a video. Now why this works so well is because of something in user experience psychology called the F shape. And now the F pattern essentially is how people navigate and engage with a website. Normally they're gonna look at the logo first, go over to the right, look at the navigation, go back down, read the main header, and that call to action. They might also go over and look at that video or image that's on the right side, or it might be an animation, and then they'll continue scrolling. So it's really optimal that you have this kind of format on your web pages. Above the fold, have a really nice bold headline that states the products, features, and benefits. You might also ask a question that resonates with them. You might state a pain point. And then the subheader, try elaborating a bit on that. And then the call to action button should forward them to a contact page, a product page, or something else that pushes them deeper into the funnel. Number two is using calls to action because every single web page you write should push users ultimately to do something. It changes depending on the product and service. For example, an e-commerce store might push people to a product page, a certain category, or maybe a promotion they have going on, while a service might push people to a contact page, get a free consultation, or a calendar booking. Thirdly, polish off your SEO. Just because you're writing web pages and you're doing copy doesn't mean that you can't actually rank on search engines because about 93% of online experiences begin with a search engine. I don't know about you, but anytime I'm trying to figure something out, I go straight to Google, I Google something, and that really helps me out. Most people are like that too, and if you optimize your copy for search engines like Google, you're just getting free traffic and exposure. Fourthly, I want you to keep it concise. We're not writing a white paper or a newspaper. A lot of web pages should be relatively short while still communicating the main benefit, the message, and goal. For example, if you can sum up something in a single sentence versus a paragraph, you should probably do that. Never add fluff to your web pages because a lot of the time, less is more. And you can take that same message and what you're trying to say, but really shorten it up. And if someone can read the copy and go through a page faster, that means they get to the call to action quicker and you get more results. I love how Ogilvy does this on their Canadian website. Now they're one of the biggest agencies in the world. So of course they're amazing at copywriting and we can take some notes. And as soon as you land on their website, there's a quick, simple sentence that sums up what they do and their portfolio as an example. They could have written a thousand words on their achievements, their goals, what they've done for clients, but really they just summed it up really quickly and allowed their portfolio and other things to speak for itself. Number five is writing an interesting about page because about pages tend to be one of the most boring pages of a website again and again. And this is because people speak about them. And it kind of seems like an obvious thing to do. You should write about yourself on an about page, but not really. And let me explain. Now on an about page, of course you do have to talk about yourself, your achievements, credibility, your background and whatnot. And it's an amazing place to build authority but like any copy, it has to blend into and communicate to the reader how it's gonna benefit them. So for example, maybe you've won a ton of awards, you're one of the fastest growing companies in America, whatever it might be, flip that into how those achievements are gonna help you generate more results for the customer, deliver a better product, and help them overcome their pain points. Here's Iron Paper, a New York digital agency. And if you actually go to their about page, I really like that they clearly state what they do for their clients, which is helping them grow through marketing and sales while creating a remarkable buyer experience. That's infinitely better than saying we're a New York digital agency and we do X, Y, Z. And really an effective about page comes down to clearly identifying who you're writing for. So have that buyer persona documented, communicating the benefits of working with you, and then using achievements, credibility, and education to build that authority. Number six is, does it have a logical order? Because your copy needs to match the internal dialogue and the questions and objections that a customer would have. For example, you wouldn't talk about the pricing of a product before you've even introduced it. That wouldn't make logical sense. It wouldn't have a logical flow. So what I want you to do when you're reading your copy and you're writing a web page, 
go back and audit that all the points actually make sense and would align with what the customers are thinking and asking themselves. Here's an example from Adobe. Now this is their Adobe Analytics tool. It educates readers about web analytics, how Adobe's platform offers that as a feature. And then the page also has sections on requesting a demo, a testimonial, extra features, and educational content. So once again, it has a logical flow of what people will be thinking and asking because they wanna know what are web analytics, what does Adobe do for that, what features are there, what have other customers said, and then you can get that free demo. Number seven, which I have beaten again and again, is always mentioning the benefits, not just the features. And I've already said this multiple times in this video alone because features are factual pieces of information. It's what a product does, but really a benefit is what customers are after and benefits are what the product features can do. For example, let's take website copywriting services. If someone was offering this as a service to a client, the website copy is the feature itself, but really the benefits would include increased web traffic, more conversion rates, you're gonna get more customers, better brand awareness and recognition, you're gonna save the person tons of time from bringing a copy themselves, and they can put that into higher ROI activities. And similar to what I was talking about before, number eight is knowing who you're writing for. Because if you don't know your audience, then you're not gonna be able to write the most effective copy possible because you have to truly know their wants, their needs, their desires their emotions, their objections, what they truly want deep down out of the product. I talk about this in depth inside my course, Sell Like Hell, which you can check out in the description if you did wanna learn more about a bulletproof copywriting process, but ideally you're gonna map out or the client's gonna have an ideal customer profile or buyer persona. I always recommend asking for one of these if you're working with a business, but if you're a business owner yourself, make sure that you're mapping out customer profiles based on previous data and interactions with customers, analytics from tools like Google Analytics and Hotjar, you can look up market reports, industry reports, and pull data from competitors to really figure out who you're speaking to. Number nine is writing super effective headlines because people are gonna read the headline and if it's not that good, they're not gonna continue scrolling. And if you master the art of headline writing, you can actually drastically increase sales. If we take Jim Edwards, for example, he tweaked his headline and was able to increase sales by 500%. Let me run you through a few examples of Jim Edwards from ClickFunnels and what he likes to do with his headlines. First is the how-to headline. This is a really simple but basic and effective headline strategy you can use. And essentially what you're gonna do is write how to X and the X is gonna be achieving a certain outcome, a certain goal or overcoming a certain pain point. For example, how to write website copy that skyrockets conversions or how to write website copy if your conversion rates are low. I also really like the template of the X ways to get Ys. So we could say something like the five ways to skyrocket your conversions, the four ways to increase your website conversions, something along the lines of that. Number 10 is one of my favorites, and this is something out of neuro-linguistic programming. It's called future pacing. This is essentially where we're gonna help readers understand what the future could look like after using a certain product or service. And there's a couple ways we can actually do this. One is helping them imagine what life would be like with the product. You can literally tell them to imagine what the product would actually do for them day to day, how your service would change their life, and this might be financially, health-wise, self-esteem, or something else. This gets them thinking about how life would be like and more excited about actually getting it. Now, something you can also do in your web pages is use future pacing to increase readership. So maybe at the top of the page, at the top of the content, you might tell readers to stick around because they'll learn X, Y, Z. And then that makes them have that incentive to actually do so. Once again, you can have the most amazing looking website. Everything can be super optimized from the design, development, and user experience. But often the copy gets really overlooked. Now, if you wanna have, if you want the highest possible conversion rates, engagement, and results from your website, you do need a really optimized web copy. You can actually go into the description and read my full blog post on this topic to get more examples and strategies. I'd love for you to actually tell me what kind of videos you'd like to see in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel, hit the bell icon so you're always alerted when I do post a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.